So over the weekend, I was given a chance to try out the Microsoft HoloLens. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to have an augmented reality headset on your head set. So the Microsoft HoloLens is a headset, obviously, released by Microsoft that isn't just your standard run-of-the-mill virtual reality headset. So while it's called a VR headset, what it actually is is augmented reality and virtual reality all rolled into one. So the Microsoft HoloLens goes beyond just the capabilities of an Oculus Rift or a similar VR type headset. So instead of just being in a world all to yourself, closed in a scary box with nothing but a screen, you actually get to interact with the world around you. So from inside the HoloLens, even in virtual reality mode by the way, you can actually see the world around you so you don't have to worry about crashing into stuff. This allows something called augmented reality, which basically means that using fancy cameras and sensors and whatnot and wizardry in the headset, it can scan your surroundings and it can actually project animations onto them through the actually clear screen that you have in front of you on the visor. Now, wearing a Microsoft HoloLens is a little bit different from wearing pretty much any other virtual reality headset. So the standard configuration for a virtual reality headset consists of the goggles, and then you have a strap, usually an elastic strap that goes around the sides and the top of your head. Now, that's all well and good if it's well designed and it can be very comfortable for a short amount of time, but after a while, because they rest right here on the bridge of your nose and are fairly heavy, they can get really, really uncomfortable. They can be pressing down on your nose for a long period of time, which if you've ever had that experience, it's not comfortable for a long period of time. Not to mention that a lot of them try to isolate you from the world so they have seals around your eyes that can get itchy and sweaty and kind of annoying. This is true not only for the Oculus Rift, but also for the Fifon and a lot of the Google Cardboard headsets that have an actual thing, goggles in front of you. The Microsoft HoloLens works a little bit differently. The way it attaches is not via a strap, but a band. So it's plastic and it goes right up here, right above your forehead, and then it goes around your head like a halo, right here to the back. And it sits right here, like that. And then the actual headset part is more of a visor. So it's on hinges and it folds down and it's actually suspended in front of your face. So there is nothing touching your face at all. And that is awesome. You don't have to worry about having goggles or a seal or resting on the bridge of your nose because it's not even touching your face. You can reach up and scratch your eye while you're using it without having to move it out of the way. And I think that's fantastic. It actually puts me in mind of having a transparent iPhone suspended in front of your face. It's very surreal and cool. Now, if you look at the HoloLens, what you'll see is two big pieces of glass that go across your eye. That isn't actually the screen part. The screen part is about the size of regular eyeglasses that are about right here on your eyes. If you look at this picture, you can see them there. See the two of them? In fact, most of the glass that you actually see on the front is obscuring the cameras and sensors that go right here above your eyebrows. Now these sensors include gyroscopes for motion tracking, ambient light sensors, cameras for seeing things and tracking stuff, and of course there's a plethora of all of them to make it really, really precise. One thing that differentiates the HoloLens from a lot of the other VR headsets that are proprietary is that the HoloLens will eventually be open source. So once it's released to the public, you'll be able to develop your own apps and have basically an app store for your cool sunglasses. So the demonstration that I was shown was by a man who actually works with NASA. So where I was was actually on the surface of Mars. So the company that the demonstration was given by actually works with the 
NASA rover that is on Mars right now. And what happens is, as the Mars rover goes around and takes photographs of the landscape, they bring that back and convert it into a 3D world that you can actually walk around in. So you can walk around and move around on the surface of Mars. That's not a reconstruction. They're actual photographs of Mars that have been stitched into a 3D map. So that is just mind blowing. Every single rock that I could see is an actual rock on Mars. And to be honest, it's pretty good. I mean, sometimes if you look down, you can see a little bit of a texture glitch where the rock is split in half or something. And then there's like crazy stuff going on in between them. But overall, and just looking around the surface of Mars, it's really just such a surreal experience. In fact, it's so surreal that walking around with the HoloLens on, you almost start walking like a weird space guy. Take a look at these videos. There he goes, the man in his HoloLens. <laughs> now, there's one other amazing thing that this company is able to do with the HoloLens. And I'll let you hear the explanation from the actual demonstrator himself. One of the other ways that we use it, and actually the thing that's most valuable about this, as cool as it is for me to wander around Mars all by myself, the neatest part is, every day right now, we have a teleconference with 75 planetary scientists to figure out what the rover's gonna do. Do you take volunteers? Well, what we do now is, we all do this, and all 75 of us meet on Mars. We meet on Mars, and then the person who's talking becomes visible and enters an avatar, walks over to a target and says, this is where I want to go, and everybody else can see what they're exactly what they're talking about, and then we can then very quickly decide, this is how we want to operate the rover, what we want to do. And those 75 people can be anywhere on Earth, because we don't care where each other are going to be located on Earth, all I care about is the fact that I'm meeting them on another planet. So basically, what he's saying is that he actually works with NASA currently to determine where the Mars rover goes. So they all get in a meeting, all 75 people, and they can actually walk around, stand on some rock and say, I want the Mars rover to go here to this rock. And because it's an actual rock, they can all agree on that and communicate with NASA who will actually send the Mars rover there in real life. And that, that is pretty amazing. The fact that we've gotten to the point where we can photograph Mars, bring it back here, put on a pair of sunglasses and walk around and say, oh, I want to explore over there rather than just looking at satellite images or, or static images is amazing. Calming down. Now let's talk a little bit about what it's like to actually have it on. What does it look like? In a lot of the footage Microsoft has shown us, they portray the experience as very immersive. As though you're in a magical world and kind of all VR headsets portray this in a similar way where you're just standing a lone person in a full enveloping world. That's not entirely the case. Here is a simulation that I've come up with to show you kind of what it looks like. When you actually have the HoloLens on, the screens are two little pieces of glass suspended right in front of your eyes. Now they don't wrap around and give you a fully immersive view. Rather, it looks like someone's holding up a clear tablet in front of your face. You're sort of looking through a screen almost. Now, in the virtual reality mode where I was, they did a pretty good job of blocking out what was behind you, but you could still see, if you looked hard enough, the, the, the actual room behind the screen. Obviously, that's important for augmented reality because you want to be able to see the actual world with the animations projected onto it. But when you're in virtual reality, it's kind of weird to be turning around and then you see a 
guy, just kind of ghostly figure standing on Mars. Now don't go thinking that you're gonna go out and get yourself one of these tomorrow because the HoloLens is still in developer mode and it hasn't really been finished yet. In fact, they just recently, a few weeks ago, released the developer version that's semi-widespread and that costs $3,000. Now, this particular unit is even earlier than that. It's one of the very first HoloLenses and according to the developer, cost over $200,000. So, the technology isn't exactly ready for the consumer marketplace. And honestly, I think that the work that is able to be done with the HoloLens, with organizations like NASA to help explore Mars, and the amazing, incredible things that you can do with the HoloLens as it is right now, far outweigh any of the drawbacks like the screen and the bulkiness. And I am so grateful for the opportunity to be able to wear one, especially this early in its development. And I hope that you guys gain something from hearing my experience with the HoloLens and continue to stay up to date on the creation of this incredible piece of technology. So thanks guys for watching this video. Make sure to check back next week for next week's video, obviously. And as usual, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at LukeMiani. Make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for more videos.